welcome to Stock Music Musician, where you'll learn how to sell music online. And now your host, Evan Oxhorn. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Stock Music Musician. And today we're going to learn a little bit about how to use the Neutron Particle Emitter. Um, this is a really tough plugin to use, I think, but you can get some really great sounds. So I'm going to show you a few ideas and show you what some of the knobs on it do. So without further ado, here we go. This is just a basic loop that comes uh, from Late Night Loops, I think, or Late Night Logic or whatever. I'm going to play it without the... Uh, particle emitter, which I'm using as a send effect instead of uh, as an insert. If you use, I think that's probably the first piece of advice I'd give you, is if you're going to use the neutron, use it as a send effect. Because when you use it as an insert, it basically turns the underlying sound into mush. Even if you have the wet dry uh, knob down pretty low, um, for whatever reason, it just sounds way cleaner if you use it as an as a send. So here is uh, the loop. Just sort of a basic loungy piano. And I am running um, it through uh, the Audiomatic, just doing some tape. Uh, compression and graining before it goes to the neutron and now we're going to turn on the neutron um, but before I do that let's just take a look at the settings um, you've got the emitter here which is basically um, what part of the sound is being replaced um, or is being captured I guess um, and so you it's a pretty small size the position is not the immediate attack, but more on the um, decay portion of it. It's being synced to the beat, um, and it's a pretty wide spread, and it's going to be playing backwards. I've pitched the uh, particles that it emits up an octave, um, and they have a very long lifetime, and I'm not using the filter. Um, so let's try it now with the neutron on. And so now you're getting this sort of glitched, fun sound. Um, but as you start to mess around with some of these, you'll hear it kind of evolve. So now I'm going to sort of randomize the pattern. And if you start messing with sync, you get some really interesting. It's almost like a stutter effect. Sort of just keep coming back to the original and then you can also mess and if you like pause it let it go out um, so you can get some cool stuttering type effects through the neutron there now the next one i want to show you is sort of um, a Pink Floydy type guitar part. Um, I put a drum beat down, just a basic loop under it, so you can sort of have a sense of what's going on. Again, I'm using it as a send. Um, so here, um, let's just do it bypassing um, the effect first, which is being sent out of seven. And there's a little bit of reverb on both the guitar and drums, but now let's turn the send effect of the neutron on. And you hear those dark swirls starting to build up, um, mutating. So um, let me show you what I'm doing here. First, running it through an equalizer. Then I've got 
the Neutron set um, with a pretty big capture. Um, the spread is low, only about 12 milliseconds. It's starting at the first position, the size, I'm, by capture I meant size. It's synced on triplets, it's playing a forward pattern. Again, I've got the pitch up um, with a pretty long lifetime, it's sort of a waver, uh, a sine wave type pattern, no filtering. Then I'm using the Pulsar Dual LFO um, to modulate this reverb here, uh, which is just a plate, sort of short, and it's modulating the dampening, so sort of the high end of it, um, out of the inverted portion. And then the straight up LFO is modulating the transform section of the Audiomatix Psych, um, which is sort of a psychedelic sound. And we'll try it without, with and without. Then just a compressor and a long sort of dreamy delay before a stereo imager widens everything. So let's check this out again. And we'll turn everything off and turn them on one at a time. So first the neutron. And this is sort of creating the squiggle by the type. You'll you can hear how that sort of changes things. This almost sounds like some sort of shredding guitar solo but behind it, but let's go back to the original. Now the reverb. And suddenly it loses a lot of that clarity and it more becomes just a wall. And remember, the high frequency is being damped here. Um, so that is sort of creating part of it. Now we're going to turn on the Audiomatic. And let's turn on the compressor because it's adding the gain. And you can hear how it's sort of getting twisted. You could also try some other presets here. And basically, the LFO is modulating this transform button. You can also, depending on the feel you want, the LFO will really just sort of steps it up. Um, more of a lo-fi, and then turn on the delay. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm just using the preset Dream Tape Echo here. Um, and the stereo imager finally just to spread it out a bit. Um, so yeah, that's a, another application of it. And finally, um, this is a song you heard a bit in an earlier video, but this is just going to show you sort of how to use it as a lo-fi delay on guitar. Um, so let's play the final product. This would also sound really good on drifting synths or anything like that. Um, so again, I was always using it as a send. Um, now let's go to the rack and see what I'm doing here. Here, first the reverb, or I mean the equalizer to cut down on the muddy sounds. And then it's going to two delays, um, or two reverbs, sorry. And with the Neutron, I think it really helps to experiment with where you place the Neutron um, vis-a-vis the, the reverbs or delays, because you'll get very different sounds. If you place it after them, then you get the sound of the reverb being all sp spread out and spread thin. Whereas if you place it in front of a reverb or delay, you sort of affect what is getting reverbed or delayed. After the Neutron here, I've got um, a resampler, which is basically just a lo-fi tool, which I really like. I would consider this to be one of the must-buy patches. It's really good for hip-hop um, or for really almost anything. I've got sort of a low level here, but you could mess with it to sort of make it drift in and out of focus even more. Um, and then just a tape plug-in and I think stereo imagers really help when using the Neutron because it does kind of create a busy sound. 
And so if you can spread those out in the stereo field, you get a much better result. Um, and let's just try um, creating sort of almost a harmony here. using the filter. Um, so yeah, that's basically a be beginning intro to how I've been using the Neutron. I'm finding it really helpful more for soundscapes um, than directly applied to something. Um, it creates lots of chaos, basically. So um, you can hear it's still just filtering some things. Uh, that's because I have hold on, I guess, um, which doesn't help. Um, but um, I think it's really, really useful for more ambient sounds or for background soundscapes, um, especially when you apply it to a reverb. Its direct sound can be pretty harsh, and I'll just do that really quickly. I'll turn off the reverbs and show you the song again. It's not necessarily unmusical, but it's just too direct. And this is even using it as a send effect. So, hope you enjoyed it. And I would definitely at least recommend downloading the demo of the Neutron, trying it out, see if you can't find some interesting uses for it. Um, you can also do some cool glitch drum effects with it, um, or run it on your whole master uh, insert chain, your master section, and use it sort of as a glitch tool. But like I said, it's a little unpredictable, so don't expect to control it directly, unlike some tools. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you like this. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.